Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucid, and we're jumping back into our game with Lemuria. Uh, we've got a pretty exciting turn here. And the reason, of course, is that we were on top of Flegger's capital last turn. And uh, we had about 600 dudes we could have there for a fight. And we had to make a decision. Do we kind of hold ground? Do we, do we kind of hold our, our ground and, and fight it out? Or do we run like little bitches? And we came up with a compromise. And our compromise was, let's leave our biggest, toughest dude, Valik. And let's hope Valik can handle it. So, uh, without further ado, we'll get into the coolest part of the turn. So we've got Valik. Valik has air shield from the armor. He's got dancing shield, which is going to reduce incoming damage. He's got boots of giant strength, so he can kill the cow. <clears throat> and uh, on this side, we have about 30 Mufalon. We've got about 160 crossbow. We've got about a dozen, or about, <coughs> sorry, still sick. Uh, about 30 helid soldiers. And uh, we've got a fair amount of priests. And <coughs> we have a small number of shackled mages. And uh, there's a few masters. So this guy's doing summon earth power. He's got a bunch of earth and air gems. We've got this guy who's a communion master, and they're communion master two. So, um, yeah. And then we've got this guy who's a communion master, and we've got these two who are communion masters. I think they're going to kill the slaves. There's not many communion. I mean, there's a lot of communion masters for every slave. And I. Th so there goes flaming arrows. And now they're popping out little uh, elementals. Let's see how these slaves are doing. Yeah, 170 fatigue. There's no way these slaves don't die. <clears throat> On my side, uh, Valik is just hanging tight. He's buffing up. The Mufalon cavalry are, are running in. Uh, no items on the god. Um, okay, the slaves... I think they're pretty punished now. Yeah, rip slaves. Uh, but, <clears throat> they have gotten, uh, they've done, I think, you know, some of their damage. They've gotten, uh, these masters fired up so that they could at least get, uh, Phoenix Power and whatever off. And now they're making a bunch of, uh, size 3 elementals. Now, this is a, a variable I didn't account for. I knew they could have some, I didn't think they would have size, uh, size 5. And I didn't know how many they were going to make. But they made quite a lot. And as we're going to see, this is going to matter. So, Valik gets surrounded by Cav and uh, infantry and doesn't give a fuck. I'll pick up the speed here. And... You can see the damage coming in, but Valik's mostly okay. Uh, some of the Mufalon volleys was a bit annoying. He's mostly okay, but he's not quite up at his 33 max. Uh, and then, unfortunately, as uh, the crossbows kill off all the surrounding chaff, he's mostly okay. These elementals, though, are going to hurt him. And they're going to hurt him for a few reasons. One is every time he punches one with the dagger, these are linked to zero. So he's going to get hit with the full force of the fire shield. <clears throat> um, and that is annoying. And then they have, uh, basically, his defense doesn't, well, his defense doesn't count for much anyway, but they have an uh, armor-piercing... Uh, fire attack, which is going to do a fair amount of damage. Like, the big ones are going to hit for 16. This is basically going to get turned into 11 with the minus with the 5 fire resistance I have. And then that's going to get... Basically, it's going to be 11 versus 20, half of 22. So it's going to be 11 versus 11. So uh, DRN will let some damage through. <clears throat> And there he goes, he dies. So, uh, not good. I did not count the... First of all, this is a bit more crossbows than I counted on. But he would have survived just the crossbows. <coughs> um, but the fire elementals I didn't really count on. Um, anyway, though, we killed four shackled mages and about 45 dudes. A lot of these were Mufalon, which are pretty expensive. Unfortunately, they probably got my gear. So now I have to worry about those Dusk Daggers floating around. Um, potentially that armor floating around. And even worse is that Dancing Shield's probably going to go on the bull, which is going to be annoying. 
So there's that. Um, so anyway, that didn't work, but it was a bit of a gamble. And, uh, you know, you've you got to lose some to win some. That's not really a saying, but, you know, if you're not in the game, you got to take risks, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, anyway, okay, so coming up, we've got uh, Al Quills, which uh, we got from Agartha. We paid him a few, few gems for. And then uh, down here, we've got some battles. So he is attacking us here with a Cloud Mage <coughs> and uh, some soldiers. I don't know if he got this guy from an event um, or what. Uh, but we've got our little crossbow stack here. A few elementals. Elementals are just going to dissolve now. <coughs> Very nice. We don't lose anything. Here we can see Agartha attacking Bogarus. Agartha just the staunchest of allies. And I mean, they're making a tidy little profit off of this. So it is working out for them. Whereas you can see how well this war is working out for the coalition against Lemuria. Not as well. If I just had to say, hey, which position do I want to go into? Do I want to go into the Agartha position, where they chose to not be in the Lemuria coalition, or do I want to go into the Lemuria coalition position? I'll take the Agartha position, thank you. That said, I'm not saying what the Lemuria coalition did was unreasonable. I'm just saying I don't want to be in it. And Agartha's making a tidy little profit. And uh, so this is Agartha coming in, trying to take the province I promised to him, which he has failed to take like six times in a row. <coughs> now the question becomes, can all of these Agartha and heavy infantry take it? And we'll find out. Oh, they get a lucky hit right off the bat. There was a chance we actually took it. Uh, we would, there's, I mean, there's a very real chance we could have fought them off. Um, probably like 10%. Here's Scassius coming in. They had a fair amount of PD here. This is probably at least 10 PD. I would bet... I would bet more. The fact that we see these two guys here, I think, means we're at least 15. We'll figure out how much. So Scassius gets all buffed up. And he's like, hey guys, anybody want a high five? And people are like, what the fuck is this helmet? Scassy's like, no, no, just high five me, man. Just high five, right here, put it here, guys. Yoink, 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 yoink. Scassy is at a very healthy 15 with just phenomenal attack and defense stats. Thank you, Scassius. Um, so we're successful there. We are attacking Flegger on top of this fort because fuck your forts. Or fuck your forts. And forts are where they make mages, and mages kill ghosts. Therefore, mages are, you know, bad and evil and all that. All of that. Uh, so, anyway, we have successfully taken out the PD here. Next to Blackdale. Now, uh, the wise among you may have asked, well, Lucid, what would have happened if you took this big fucking army that you have here, and you actually didn't run like a bitch, and you fought on top of Flegra with Velik? You had Velik in your army, and you fought with him, alongside of him. What would have happened? <clears throat> well, if I had everybody, it would have been about 600 people. I think what would have happened is I would have won, but barely. That is my assessment. I would have won, but barely. The best part about that is I would have kept the leaks in gear. The worst part about it is I wouldn't really be in a position to take any infrastructure. <clears throat> Might have had like a hundred ghosts left. Flegra would be pretty properly fucked too, but we kind of would both be fucked, and I would rather him be fucked and me not be fucked, and that's what I was shooting for. Um, I expect if I had 600, I would have lost 400 pretty easily. Pretty easily. Always hard to say, but 180 crossbows can kill a lot of Lemurian ghosts with flaming arrows. A lot. Uh, 
Uh, now this is uh, Sertoma, and Sertoma is running in to give hell to Bogarus. There was a pretty obvious spot where I was going to raid, uh, and I expected Bogarus to reinforce, but I was going to raid pr probably with some ghosts. Uh, and here I chose not to do the ghosts. Here I chose to send uh, Sertoma, which I didn't think he would expect. <clears throat> and even though there's like eight F marks, some of them are in the back and they're not doing anything. These guys really should be on advance and cast spells, but these guys in the front are doing basically smite. Uh, but he just doesn't care, it's not enough. Critical mass is not high enough. Um, now he is scripted to s advance and cast spells, which means he's going to try to apostasy these guys. Uh, which I support. But unfortunately he misses a lot. And then he finally routes them. Tries another final apostasy spam. Doesn't get any. One day we'll get one. Uh, so that was us here. And then coming down here in Aeole, <clears throat> uh, we run into a reasonably large Phlegrin army. Um, they've got some priests, so that's not great. They're doing Strength of Giants, Legions of Steel. But no Flaming Arrows. And... Uh, we have some ghosts that have made it around the backside. And that is going to turn out to be rather nice. Because we will catch some of their uh, retreating people and hopefully get a mage or two. No. We get the, the Shackled Mages, though. That is always nice. Which means he's going to actually have trouble fueling his little... His Communion Masters, because he burnt... He already b killed all the Shackled Mages in his cap. We just killed all these here. <clears throat> um, that was this one. So, here you can see we got one of the Oppressors. We got four of the Shackled Mages and we killed most everybody else. Cost us 14 guys, which in my book is basically nothing. And then here's the battle where we lost the uh, we lost Velik. Rest in peace, Velik. And uh, he'll be back. He's not gone for good, but we lost his gear. His gear is gone for good. Worse, his gear is probably handed over to the enemy. And here we can see <coughs> Bogarus attacking us. Bogarus 2.0. So Bogarus 2.0 is using Communion Slaves, and uh, they are also using... Huh. It's really odd. These guys want Affliction Resistance, too. Affliction Resistance is not a very good bless. Uh, but we see it on... It, both people in the Coalition have Affliction Resistance. Very, very strange. Uh, anyway... Um, we have, I think, a few of these guys as communion slaves. I think there's, what, yeah, four? And then there's two masters. And then, is this guy a master? No. This guy is not in the communion. Um, and then these guys just run forward. And they're going to spam Thunderstrike, which means they're at evocation five, I think? Maybe it's four. Now, Thunderstrike is kind of a problem. We'll look at it real quick. And then the Mind Burns come out. So they have Mind Burned and Thunderstrike, which these are the things that are going to make it pretty hard for me to thug against. The reason is, if we look at Thunderstrike, <coughs> yeah, for 26 shock damage. Very hard to be immune to 26 shock damage. Um, possible, but difficult. Uh, so anyway, we'll have to figure out how we handle that. And then if we're immune to that, we can still get hit by Mind Burn. And soon enough, there's going to be Soul Slay. <coughs> and that is going to be annoying. So, yeah. Uh, that was this. And then we attack um, these idiots over here. I really hate that I'm coughing, but I've gotta get gotta keep keep up on the recording. Um okay, so anyway, that was all the battles. For events, we got some unrest, some nature gems, and some more unrest. 
We caught a scout. And we had some uh, some things finish. Uh, Valik. Oh my god, guys. I didn't even notice this until just now. Valik got heroic quickness. Pog. Friggin' champ. That's like one of the best. So here's Valik. He'll be back. He got an affliction. Who cares? He's got heroic quickness. Guys, you don't know how good this is. Okay, what this means is I save up enough earth gems and I earth empower him. And then Valik gives zero fucks about just about anything. He just does not care. Valik will care none. Um, actually, really important. We are very, very slowly working our way up. Uh, unfortunately, our god off my porch searched, but did not find anything here. We're very disappointed. Uh, regardless, <coughs> we'll send off my porch down here and hopefully he can make it up to us. Uh, we are flush in income. We're at 1800. Look at look how this war is going for us right now. Look at this income graph. <coughs> Just could not be better. Uh, provinces. Also very nice. So what do we do here? Well, there's four Philegrin forts. Uh, here's his capital. Um, I have raided all his cap circle, so his cap can't even produce much. Um, this one I've raided all the provinces that are near it. This one I've raided one of them. Um, now he has a big doom stack. He does not have shackled mages to go with the doom stack. Shackled mages are going to have to come out of these uh, these forts, which we don't really want to let him get at anymore. So, um, and we're also looking at the clock. We've got about 10 turns until tyrants start coming. Don't know if we're going to be able to get his cap by then. If We really needed to win this battle for that to happen. So there's a very good chance y'all are going to, get to see some, uh, some very hot, very spicy ghost on tyrant action. Now, well, what, what are we going to do? Well, I cannot fight this army, especially now that I've split my forces. So we're definitely not going to be headed back. I mean, we could, but I think that would be ill-advised. What I expect is going to happen, he's going to do flaming arrows, skip a lot of the summons, march this army down here, and try to catch me over this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock both of these forts down, this one, and this one with enough to one turn pop it. Now this fort already has on top of it 77 siege strength. There's probably a few dudes inside, but probably not many. I imagine the actual siege defense of this fort's like 25. So I think we did like 50 siege damage to it this turn, which means there's 200 left. So I need to have at least 200. Well, I have left enough here where we have 60, 100, 180, 200, 250 just about. We have just about 250 siege strength. We're going to be moving on top of it this turn. <clears throat> Which in conjunction with the, you know, combined with the fact, well, you have to subtract from the 250, the 25 that I think is here. And that should be enough to one to, well, it's not really a one turn pop anymore, but to, to pop it. Now this army is three, uh, 336. This will definitely one turn pop this fort. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to pop both these and whichever one he doesn't move towards is the one we're going to uh to kill whichever one he does move towards we're probably going to come up with an evacuation plan um but we're also going to raid because that's how we do so this guy's going to raid underwater and this guy's going to raid on land with just the minimal amount of people i would put more on the raiding squads but i really need this many people i feel to have a pretty comfortable chance at cracking both forts um, and I would like to raid more, like I could raid all of this stuff, but if I do that, I'm not going to be able to pop the forts. And I want to get this infrastructure taken, um, because that's really going to cripple him. It's, the, taking infrastructure is kind of, it's irreparable damage in a way, to a warrior you're already slowly losing. Um, so he's, we're in a situation where I cannot straight up fight him. I will lose, I... Especially now that I've split my armies, I will lose if I straight up fight this army. But um, if he splits his army, he has all sorts of problems of his own. Like I can, I'm faster, so I can potentially consolidate my forces better. And if I, I will fight this army if he splits it in half. So like, 
I'm not sure what the move would be. But if at any point I see an opportunity where I'm pretty sure I know where he's going to go and I can bring my whole army and he's only going to bring half, I'll do it. Um, now there's a few other kind of bells and whistles that are coming on this strategy. One is that we're sending Sir Toma over here. And Sir Toma is going to, basically, he probably cannot kill the bull, but he can definitely gimp the shit out of the bull. And one thing we did accomplish this fight is we managed to curse the bull. So the bull is not cursed, but it is about to be, because we're doing uh, anathema. And anathema targets this guy. There it went, anathema. So he is now, oh, maybe it hasn't targeted yet. Okay, there goes Anathema again, and you can see it just nailed him. So he is now cursed. That will contribute, it'll make it a bit easier to kill the bull. And then it's going to make him much more crippled when we're stabbing him in the face with the Dusk Dagger. So, um, but, so there's a few reasons to having this. One is, and also potentially with these archers, we actually may be able to kill the bull. If he does, like, army this way, bull this way, we don't actually have to run. So that's kind of point one. Uh, Anti-bull, uh, or kind of like, yeah, counter-bull. Anti-bull countermeasures. And then the other thing is we can potentially, if we want to, we could send Sertoma in this fort alone while we move the army off to go siege this. So, like, let's say he comes over here and we check both of these, right? And I'm on this fort and this fort next turn, and he's right here. Well, he's really only going to have one move. Uh, he basically is going to, and this is what I think he's going to do. I think he's going to take this whole force and come hit this way. <clears throat> so then he's going to have to come here and hit this throne, at which point I can dodge in like a dozen different ways, right? I can come back. I can go sideways. Potentially, I can even skip through them. I'm not sure the movement cost. If I own this and I own this, <clears throat> I may even be able to double back this way. Um, but we'll see. So anyway, there's probably a bunch of different moves that I could make from here. But he, he remember, okay, so he's moved his army here. I own probably most of this. And I have this fort cracked. Well, I and I, I'm taking these two this turn too. So um, potentially, if there's no check on this, and it's going to be pretty easy for me to take, I can just send Sir Toma inside. Or Sir Toma and like, you know, 50 dudes. And... Uh, they can basically go inside and take it, and I take this army that was on top sieging this, and I start sieging this one down. And it would be maybe like a two-turn crack on this fort. So, um, anyway, I'm here and here. He's here. He has to move the army here to kick me off, otherwise I get both of these forts. He'll know that I'm, <coughs> I'm gonna run, but he won't be sure. And even if I don't like, I could just send in Scassius or something, because Scassius is coming down here, right? So, he's going to have to come kick me off the fort. At the point, at the time he does that, he's going to move this army this way, and on the same turn he's doing that, I potentially can be taking this fort and going to do a two-turn pop on this fort. And now he's here, and I've got this fort. He moves out one turn. He's not going to have enough time, probably, to get to this fort before I take it, too. And then he's in a real sticky situation, because now I've got the two forts on the opposite side of his empire from me. I've got most of his territory. All he has is his cap. And, yeah. And then it's just a matter of time. He's basically fucked. So, anyway, that's that's kind of the plan. Uh, Bogarus has a big army. But they have to worry about Agartha coming and kind of nipping at their heels. So I don't know if they're going to do a heavy commitment. I w if I were Boogers, I would not do a heavy commitment into attacking me. Um, but anyway, I don't really want to make peace with Boogers because right now I'm up in territory. And if we made peace, it would probably be going back to original borders. And right now this is a very cheap war for me. Um, so yeah, I do expect him to come here this turn with these guys. I could potentially, oh no, I can't. Oh, no, I probably could actually, here, wait. Okay. I could come here. Uh, 
mean, that would kind of be worth it. Let's just watch this battle, how it's going to play out. Got a big stack here, a big stack here. They're going to delete... Kind of a lot of ghosts a turn. But god, if we get back and we kill that many of them, that would be pretty... Pretty useful. I don't think there's an... We're just... I think we're going to play kind of conservative. There's no need for me to... To risk so much. Wait, where did this go? Did this make it all the way? No, I just went here. So I was going to move him here, but I actually have more map movement. I can move him over here. So... Yeah, from here we can choose to kind of take back some of this other stuff. Not really sure what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely take this. <coughs> I don't see the Earth Snake. Oh, here's the Earth Snake, Miss Pumpernickel. So the Earth Snake's probably going to come out and play. Now, this guy will solo kill the Earth Snake, too, so he's got to be careful about that. But right now, he's kind of getting picked apart. Um, okay, so what else? <coughs> um, finally, we'll cover infrastructure. We've got a fort going up here this turn. It'll be finished. We're putting a temple up. Here, we've got three months left. And I went and started doing this once we really went on deep on the offensive with Flegra. Because I knew all this offensive stuff was going to take a lot of pressure off my part of the war front. And I'd probably be able to sneak it up. Now, this throne I don't particularly want, so I probably won't even claim it. Well, at some point I will. Once my dominion has spread all over here, there'd be no reason not to. But I'm not very excited about claiming it, and put it that way. Um, this fort is going up in two turns, so we've got... I've actually wasted a turn of, of this guy researching. I'm going to send him out to build a, a lab and temple. Uh, I got one of my bats to come over here, and my bat is going to go do uh, some lab construction. Uh, we have this guy building a lab here, and you can see I don't have quite enough projects to spend all my money on. Uh, upgrading this fort, which came up this turn. So in not too long, this will be a big, big boy fort, and we are going to spread our toxic plague dominion everywhere. Uh, we're sight-searching here with iFlight, and he'll probably move southwards and sight-search here. And, uh, oh, he's got some toads here, too. Where are those toads from? This is interesting. I wonder if, what toad tribe, I wonder if they're, what is that? I can't remember what the shamans for toad tribe are. That could be nice. Um, but yeah, I think how many... Let's take a look at our research, too, because I went ahead and equipped those uh, those alquils. One over here, and then I think one over here. So our research now is 118, and I think it's going up by about... It, it, it's going up by one of these guys every month, right? So that's six, six a month. And then it's going to be, in the future, we're getting our first one of the Golden Adepts this turn. It's going to be going up by 23. <clears throat> it'll actually be a little more once we get our magic scale spread here. But uh, it'll be going up by 26 a month, so about 13, or 26 every two months. So about 13 a month from these guys. So combine these, that's like 19 a month. And then uh, we have right now 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, about 12... Uh, 13, 14. Yeah. Well, this will be our 15th fort, I think. So, uh, once I have all those labbed, which I don't have all of them, but I have most of them labbed now, uh, then we'll basically be at, well, we'll be at 15 lemur acolytes a year. Um, and they are each about 13... So it's probably around like 15 RP a month I'm going to be getting from Acolytes. 
So anyway, when you add all that up, how much is our RP probably going to be increasing per turn? It's going to be probably about like 25 a turn. It's going to be going up now that we're we're kind of in the meat and potatoes portion. And then plus I might be able to trade for some more uh, research items. And that's going to be quite nice because already we're we're tracking pretty well. The amount of research I have to do to get to enchantment six, which is kind of my target, because that's going to be my first big power spike. Uh, the amount of research I'm going to need is, whew, let's figure it out. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to pull up the chart. Okay, so uh, I pulled up the table. The amount that we need, uh, basically it's 2750 is how much research we need to get to level six. I think right now we're at about 150 along the way because I think we just finished level two or something like that or we're about to. So uh, right now our research is 115 <coughs> and I think it's gonna be going up by around 34 a turn. Uh, and that's the one from the bat, the 13 from the add-ups, and then the 15. And this is assuming I don't waste their turns. I'll waste some of them, but I don't know. This is... But I may also get some of the other things, which are going to offset the fact that I waste some turns. So anyway, this is how much it's going to be going up per turn. Then if it's how many... The question is how many turns is it going to be until we're at 27? And the answer appears to be 8. I mean, 11. So we're 11 turns away. And this is... How many turns it's going to be? So, yeah, Here, RP per turn, RP total, and then how fast the RP per turn increments. So, yeah, let's pull pull the game back up. Uh, right now it's turn twenty two. That means by turn 30, 33 we'll be at rear mortis, and that will be pretty huge. If I can trade, by that time, Agartha will probably also be Construction 6. And if he makes me water bands, or whatever they're called, water bracelets, oh my god. We're going to be in very, very good position. Because then I can do Rigor Mortis and Grip of Winter. And then I won't have to worry about this stuff. Then I'll be able to actually do these big fights. That said, Flaming Air is still going to be annoying, but... Uh, the other nice thing about running up here is I will get aerofend by then. <clears throat> so I'll be able to actually fight these guys too once I get uh, level 6. Now it's going to be tricky because I have to worry, not really for Felegra, but other nations I have to worry about magic duel and stuff. And I would pro I'll probably have to do a communion uh, to get my, uh, my consoles uh, up to snuff to handle that. But it's not, it's not really that big of a deal. Honestly, these guys aren't that expensive. I could just spur splurge on having two of them. They go with my army. <coughs> It'll be fine. Um, and, you know, I would only do it for really big armies. And, I, you know, I don't want to do it. Or I could just really splurge and get two Grand Lemurs and use my Grand Lemurs as slaves. Um, I mean, probably worth it. Because two of these guys are going to be 40. Yeah. So anyway, as we get closer, that's something we need to think about, getting more Grand Lemurs so that by the time, like we probably only are going to have like four or five more turns worth of getting consoles, and then it's probably going to be Grand Lemur time, because we want to probably have enough to get, like we want to have enough where we can probably Communion Slave up to do Aerofend, um, and then enough to just cast Rigor Mortis. All of them can cast Rigor Mortis though. And they just drop Power of the Spheres and then Rigor Mortis, so. Um, yeah. Pretty legit, I would say. And we're actually a little bit ahead of that, because you can see we're a bit, we're like 69 research ahead of it, which is not much. But I think it it's going to still be about the same timing. Um, <coughs> that's good. There's no way I'm going to die in the next 11 turns. That's just not, I don't think, in the, in the cards. Which means uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to survive through the week period uh, to the point where I have rigor mortis and aerofend and all of that stuff. And I'll probably not, I don't know if I can fight this now. Because really, the thing is I don't have that dancing shield anymore. That was an item I found. 
And the one of the things I am doing too is we've put this uh, the elemental armor on this guy Death Jest, and we're sneaking him out here. I'm trying to meet him up with Sir Toma, and he's going to give that to Sir Toma. And now Sir Toma with this is going to be very hard to kill. He's going to be um, basically plus ten resist all the other resistances, and uh, at that point you can forget about doing much of anything to him. Um, he'll, he'll be okay versus the, and, and this is really high protection. Uh, this is going to be, yeah, 20 body protection. If we compare that to what he currently has, it's only 13. So he's going to get plus seven body protection, which is huge, absolutely huge. Um, and it's going to give him fire resistance 10. All of that will make him immune to lesser fire elementals. So we can potentially, once we meet him up, we can use him to just run him into this army. And with the shield, he won't be able to kill their god, but he'll be able to maim it. And with the shield, with the elemental armor, uh, we can just plow him into the army. <coughs> so that's a good thing. And we may have a predictable move. Like if they move here, we can move here. So like next turn we take, I don't know. There, as this army is like running up to catch me, catching this fort if they end up coming south, or it's gonna be hard to say where their army is, but if they're running to try to knock me off of something, it's going to tend to give me predictable moves that, you know, where I'll know where he's going to go and I can potentially just plant Sertoma there. Um, yeah. So anyway, I think that's pretty good. Flegra having to fight Lemuria with only Elemental is tough. It's tough. Because they can do, you know, like as you, you're going to see, I'm going to be, like here it worked, so they got the Fire Elementals and all that out. And Air Elementals, you know, will kind of work too. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to be able to... I think they're in trouble. I think Flegra is fucked. I think they're fucked. Um, we're building the other final final thing is we're building some scouts uh, I've got a scout coming in here so I don't really need to build one but we're building scouts um, in these provinces kind of and we will be looking to fort up this whole row right now obviously we have forts going up here but we're going to be looking to fort up this whole row next uh, and then once this is forted up, then Flegra is in real trouble because I'm going to be just booming out Dominion. And they're like struggling to keep hold on to their forts. So at this point, I think Flegra is not long for the world. But they still have a really big scary army, which I have to figure out a way to deal with. And if they survive long enough to get their tyrants up, which it's looking now like they will, they can potentially be a big nasty pain in my, uh, in my ass for a good deal longer which we're not excited about, but we'll suffer. Um, one thing that is nice is we see that uh, Atlantis is up here, but they do not have this, which is good. Atlantis's cap is going to be right here. So we Atlantis is probably one of the nations we're weakest against. So, yeah, we're... We're not very stoked about having to fight Atlantis. Let's just put it that way. So the longer, <laughs> the more other nations are between me and him, uh, the better. Uh, if you watch Nuclear Monkey, who has a, not Nuclear Monkey, Psy, who has a Lemuria playthrough, it's for Dominion's Four, so it's not quite as relevant. Um, he ends up fighting Atlantis reasonably early and kind of spanks him, so it's, Pretty, pretty cool to watch. Um, but yeah, I think that is about it. I uh, don't think there's anything else, so take care, guys. Cheers.